Like every artist, Michael Bedard is automatically the heir of the art of his predecessors. But there is an artist whose work has had a great influence on him, Edward Hopper, a realist who portrayed the feelings of loneliness, senselessness, isolation, and abandonment. The similarity and simultaneous difference between the two painters can be best illustrated by looking at Bedard's Window Shopping from 1988. Bedard takes Hopper's motif of the Nighthawks of 1942 as the basis for creating his own variant and making his own statement. Hopper's painting shows four persons in a diner at night. No one is found on the street. Bedard's title, Window Shopping, already indicates that someone is observing the scene in the bar from the outside. But unlike in Hopper's painting, here the observer is not just the picture's viewer, but also a quite concrete and additional figure within the picture, an alligator. The painting's title underscores the prominent significance of the alligator, because the reptile is the only figure in the picture to which the title can refer. Bedard even hides in the painting another figure that is observing the scene. It is a duck looking out of the window in the first upper story of the building, which lies in shadow. Where Hopper's painting has a blurred, bright spot in the window, Bedard places an eyewitness. This duck in the window looks into the restaurant through a second window pane, one farther away from us, and thus has a perception of the scene that differs from ours. In Nighthawks, there is the viewer's gaze at the figures in the bar, who are concerned with themselves and do not interact with each other. In contrast to that, the situation in window shopping is much more complex, with several layers of perception. The alligator looks into the bar, the bartender looks out from the bar onto the street and perceives the alligator in turn, Two ducks talk with and perceive each other. One duck dozes away and is thereby the only figure as self-absorbed as the four in Hopper's painting. And finally, as in Hopper's picture, there is a glimpse of the scene as a whole, whereby this glimpse is again doubled. The viewer looks from the front and the duck in the window looks from the back. Unlike in Hopper's painting, here, it is not only the interior of the bar that is important, but also the exterior, the alligator on the street. Whereas Hopper makes us into observers of the inner emotional life of the people in his painting, the depiction of the external world within the picture, the scene on the sidewalk, is very important to Bedard. In contrast to Hopper, Bedard is not interested in people's solitude but in something completely different, the fragility of human life, and in people's perception of the world. The fragility expressed here results unmistakably from the content of the picture. The alligator's interest is in eating the duck. Its jaw is opened wide, revealing threatening, sharp teeth. This reveals what the reptile understands by window shopping. It views the ducks as a welcome meal. But for the ducks themselves the danger is not present. One of the four ducks sleeps through the whole situation, and two ducks turn their backs to the danger and are in the middle of a conversation. Only the bartender observes the alligator, but he seems more astonished than frightened. At least one does not recognize any unambiguous signs indicating that the situation is properly recognized in its real monumentousness. The viewer of the painting feels compelled to compare this painting with sitting ducks. There too, only one duck has noticed the bullet holes, though without panicking. With this picture as well, Bedard leaves up to the viewer the decision of whether the ducks are in danger or not. The circle with Hopper's painting is thus completed. Nighthawks too recalls a still shot from a crime movie in the film noir series and leaves the development of the stories before and after up to the viewer's imagination. Bedard puts suitcases in place of the cash register that is in the showcase window of the store in the back of the painting Nighthawks. 
He thereby alludes to the fact that life itself is a journey with an unknown destination. A humorous element in Bedard's picture comes to the fore in the inscription over the restaurant. In Hopper's painting, we find an advertisement for Philly's cigars and the information that these cost five cents each. Bedard has replaced the name Philly's with the term yuppies, young adults for whom only money counts. For this reason, Bedard has also changed the price of cigars from five cents to fifty dollars. This price for a cigar is extravagant, but corresponds with the yuppies' attitude towards life. Bedard's picture's reference to yuppies has yet another meaning. This segment of society is interested primarily in consumption. It can frequently be found in the shopping malls and likes to devote itself to window shopping and buying products. But by reversing the inside and the outside, Bedard makes the consumption-oriented yuppies in the interior of the bar themselves the focus of the alligator's window shopping. Therefore, the purchasers become the sale item. Another piece by Bedard also shows the influence by Hopper. The study for Hopelessly Lost is strongly based on Hopper's engraving Night Shadows of 1921. Both chose the unusual angle of view down from above. Diagonals and shadows are introduced. In the completed painting Hopelessly Lost, Bedard maintains the extreme perspective from above as in the study, but does so completely without Hopper's dramatic shadow effects, which were still visible in the study. The duck figure walks directly towards the illuminated spot in the picture, whereby this time the light comes down vertically from above. In the initial composition, the long shadows indicated that an indefinable object must be present outside the left-hand margin of the picture. In the final version of this picture, the lighting rules out this possibility. Thus, everything plays out within the confines of the painting itself. For the viewer, it is clear that the brightest spot is found in the painting itself, and that the surroundings of the concentrically illuminated street are deserted. This focus on the emptiness in the picture and the absence of any reference to a sight outside of the painting increases the feeling of loneliness. In comparison with the original version, Bedard reverses the situation shown in the Hopper engraving, whereby this time Bedard concentrates everything on the interior of the picture, while Hopper gave the scene an interior and an exterior. There is a very unique painting by Bedard that, although not based on a Hopper composition, conveys most strongly the feeling of loneliness and isolation so frequent in Hopper's work. It is called Dawn in the Factory. In this picture, a solitary duck wanders through a factory in a labyrinth of tubes and pipes, looking quite lost. The painting works using Hopper's means in order to evoke emotions in the viewer. The light effects, the interplay between cold and warm, and the small window in the upper left-hand part of the picture recall Hopper's repertoire. But Bedard uses two other means in order to depict the feeling of being lost. The size of the duck, it seems very small in comparison with the gigantic room, of which only a part is visible, and the confusion in the room, the chaos of the tubes and the pipes, intensifies the feeling that the duck does not know exactly where he is. It is walking on a pipe in the direction of the source of the light, which is the only thing offering any sort of orientation and thus hope. The duck explores its surroundings almost as if in a trance. Unlike in Hopper's works, in which the main theme is loneliness, this painting by Bedard places fragility in the foreground again. It remains open to question whether the duck will be able to find its way out of the labyrinth. The rusty pipes do not provide any reassuring impression that the duck is moving towards safety. Nor can the duck make a false step, or it will plunge into the depths. It is not even on solid ground, but on a pipe at an unknown height, and one must assume that a fall may have fatal consequences. Quite differently from Hopper's figures, which live in their own world, 
the duck in Dawn in the Factory is interested in its external world. In it we find no self-preoccupation as with Hopper's figures, but openness and curiosity. The duck wants to comprehend the complex environment and judge the situation correctly. It is everything else but a typical Hopper figure. Bedard's work is influenced by Hopper, but it takes it in a different direction. Therefore, Bedard is truly a modern-day master.